Big data, health informatics, and bioinformatics are some of the buzzwords that you have heard these days. What is bioinformatics? Why is it important? And how can we use bioinformatics to solve some of the problems that we face every day? These are some of the questions that we will attempt to address in this lecture. In 1799, while constructing a fort in Egypt, a group of French soldiers came across an ancient Egyptian tablet containing hieroglyphics on it. What made the discovery of this tablet, later known as the Rosetta Stone, is so groundbreaking was not just the fact that it contained hieroglyphics. At this point, quite a few stones without a known translational script had already been discovered. It was the Greek version which came with the hieroglyphics that made the stone so important to scholars. For over a thousand years no one has been able to read the ancient Egyptian script, but everyone trained in classical languages could read Greek. This discovery enabled the scholars to find a way to decode the meaning of the hieroglyphics. The symbols which have been silent for over a millennium became a new window into ancient Egyptian life and culture. Today, we are faced with a challenge and an opportunity similar to that of the Rosetta Stone. It comes from a language which works in any human language in the immense number of volumes written in it, and that is the language of DNA. DNA contains the blueprints for every biological process of every living thing on Earth, and even a small defect in the genetic code can cause devastating health consequences. Understanding how genes work, both individually and with each other is crucial to the development of 21st century personalized medicine. However, the problem is that even when we actually have an organism's DNA in front of us, it is not possible to sift through it without an army of people to understand it. It is often not easy to tell what an individual gene does. Even more difficult is to tease out the subtle influences that multiple genes have on each other. But answering those kinds of questions is foundational to attacking the root cause of genetically influenced diseases. Today, new high-throughput technologies bring unprecedented opportunities for life science research. They allow us to get new data never seen before, to study new questions impossible to study before, and to discover new phenomena unimaginable before. Now we can sequence not only one person's genome, but also many different people's genomes. This allows us to study the genetic differences between different people at genome scale, as well as many other questions in population genetics. At the same time, we can also study the genetic differences between patients and normal controls to find the genetic mutations responsible for some of the diseases. In addition to the human genome, over 1,000 trillion base pairs from over 165,000 species had been sequenced by the end of 2013. Just reading them would take 30 million years. Life science data is not only big in size, but also growing exponentially. This figure shows the number of nucleotides sequenced and stored in the GenBank database over the years. The number of nucleotides had been increasing exponentially since 1982, doubling every 20 months. What does this mean? It means that the data deposited into GenBank in the next 20 months from now on is as much as all the data that have existed in the history of humans till today. At the same time, the sequencing cost had been decreasing every year. The past few years had seen even steeper growth of sequencing data. The reason is that next-generation sequencing technologies had been developed and used more and more widely in all areas of life sciences. Next-generation sequencing technologies can sequence one person's genome in a day with less than $2,000. Just think about what exciting discoveries these never-seen-before data may contain. Other than sequencing data, other high-throughput technologies such as proteomic, metabolomic and etc., had also generated a large variety of data. With great opportunities come great challenges. The huge amount of data requires efficient methods. Exponential growth requires scalable methods. The low signal-to-noise ratio requires accurate methods. And handling multiple types of data requires data integrative methods. These are significant technical challenges. But, it depends on how you look at it. 
Technical challenges can also mean opportunities for technical innovations. The birth and growth of the field of bioinformatics has been driven by these opportunities and challenges. As you may be able to realize by now, the integration between life science and computer science is inevitable, and the result is the birth and growth of the field of bioinformatics. Bioinformatics can be defined as an interdisciplinary field that develops and applies computer and computational technologies to study biomedical questions. It has two roles. As a technology, bioinformatics is a powerful technology to manage, search, and analyze big data in life sciences. As a methodology, bioinformatics is a top-down holistic, data-driven, genome-wide, and systems approach that generates new hypotheses, finds new patterns, and discovers new functional elements. It complements traditional experimental biology methods. A seamless combination of computational and experimental methods should be the best way to study a biological question. Bioinformatics is truly interdisciplinary. It studies questions in biology and medicine, while developing and applying methods in computer sciences, mathematics, statistics, and physics. It overlaps with medical and clinical informatics, systems biology, and synthetic biology. The bio and bioinformatics signifies the biological questions it studies, many of which can be grouped under the conceptual framework from genotype to phenotype and the central dogma. Some examples may help you understand better. For instance, sequence alignment. Are the sequences of two genes or proteins similar? Could they be homologous? How can we find the closest homologue of the gene we are studying from the vast databases? Can I use the known function of a known gene to guide the study of my gene of interest? Given DNA and genome sequences, how can we find the genes in the vast genome? How can we compare the similarity and difference between two whole genomes and reconstruct the evolutionary history? What are the syntenic regions between two genomes? How can we identify which genomic regions are methylated? At the level of RNA expression, we often need to find out which genes are differentially expressed between two organs or tissues, between tumor and normal tissues, or between two different developmental stages. At the level of proteins, how do you identify the expressed proteins from mass spec data? Proteins do not exist in a linear form in nature. Instead, they are folded into beautiful three-dimensional structures in nature. How can we predict the three-dimensional structure of a protein from its sequence? Molecules do not exist or function in isolation. Instead, they form complex molecular network. How can we construct protein-protein interaction networks, transcription regulation networks, and metabolic and signaling pathways. What are the dynamic features of these networks? Furthermore, with these data and researches, how can we simulate a virtual cell? Last but not least, how do you compare different people's genomes and use population genetic approaches to compare the genomes of the ill and the healthy, and identify the gene mutations that cause diseases? From these examples, we can see that there are many interesting and important questions in life sciences that await our bioinformatics investigation. Seeing bioinformatics from another angle, the informatics in bioinformatics signifies the information and computational methods to manage, search, and analyze the data. The theme runs along the axis from data to discovery. First, the storage, index, and search of terabytes to petabytes of big data require advanced databases. Just imagine, your laptop probably has several gigabytes of hard disk. However, just one set of our experiments often generates one or more terabytes of data, which is too large to fit in your laptop. Managing such big data requires advanced database systems. Analysis of noisy big data requires the development of many algorithms, software tools, and web servers. These make up a big portion of bioinformatics research. A tradition in bioinformatics, since the early days till today has been to make most algorithms and software open source. This has contributed significantly to the broader life science research, and had helped to advance bioinformatics itself as well. With these tools, we can do a lot of data mining to discover new patterns and phenomena in life science. 
Finally, by integration of data and tools, we can build predictive models of biological systems. As more and more high-throughput technologies are used more and more in life science, there will continue to be numerous new opportunities for technology innovation in bioinformatics. To meet this challenge, a new breed of professional that could collaborate and communicate with biomedical researchers, clinicians, quantitative scientists, and bioethicists is needed to translate the genomic knowledge to improve patient outcomes. In summary, bioinformatics is central to molecular life science research.